This is going to be a short video that discusses diatomic elements. The diatomic elements are elements that will never be found by themselves in nature. The atoms that make up these elements are more stable, bonded to an identical atom of itself than they are when they are alone. There are seven diatomic elements. They are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. For us, that means that when you see these elements in a chemical reaction, if they are not bonded to another atom, they should get a 2 for a subscript. That means that this is not just one oxygen atom found by itself. It is a molecule made up of two atoms, two oxygen atoms, because oxygen is one of the diatomic elements. It is more stable, bonded to an identical atom of itself, than it is alone. I want to show you a couple of ways that you can memorize the diatomic elements. First of all, recognize the shape that they make on the periodic table. They make an apostrophe, 7, where the apostrophe is hydrogen. The 7 starts with nitrogen, which is element number 7, and then there are 7 elements total. There are 7 total diatomic elements. Another way that you can memorize these is with a mnemonic. The one that I like the best is, I brought clothes from Old Navy home. So it's, I brought clothes from Old Navy home to represent iodine, bromine, chlorine, fluorine, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen. Let's look at some examples of chemical equations that contain diatomic elements, and hopefully this will reinforce some of the concepts that we saw in the last video about chemical equations. Oxygen is one of our diatomic elements. So here's a case where oxygen was alone in the chemical reaction. It was not bound to a different element. So oxygen got a 2 for a subscript because it's a diatomic. Over here, oxygen was not by itself, so it doesn't necessarily get a 2. In this case, when oxygen is part of a compound, its subscripts come from crossing down charges. Magnesium oxide does not have any subscripts because magnesium has a charge of plus 2, oxygen is minus 2, those charges are balanced out so there were no subscripts needed. So you're only looking at this 2 concept with your diatomics when they are by themselves. In this next reaction, lithium is by itself. However, lithium is not one of the diatomic elements, so it's perfectly fine for lithium to be by itself. Fluorine is by itself, but it is a diatomic, so a 2 for a subscript has been put onto fluorine. Notice that there's a 2 on the fluorine on the left side of the reaction, but not on the right, because we never bring subscripts across the arrow. This 2 came from the fact that fluorine is a diatomic, the lack of a 2 over here comes from crossing down charges. The fact that there were a different number of fluorine atoms on each side of the reaction was fixed by balancing the reaction using coefficients. So your subscripts come from recognizing your diatomics and making sure they have a 2. Your subscripts are sometimes part of a polyatomic ion and you don't want to take those away or your subscripts come from crossing down your charges. But once your subscripts are in place, they are fixed. You do not change subscripts to balance an equation. You add coefficients to balance the equation. Let's look at one more example. This is the chlorate ion. The chlorate ion is ClO3 with a charge of minus 1. We've paired it with sodium. Sodium has a charge of plus 1. So NaClO3 does not need any additional subscripts because the charges have balanced out. On the right-hand side of the equation, I've got sodium, which has a charge of plus 1, with chlorine with a charge of minus 1. Cross those down, and you do not need any additional subscripts. Then I have oxygen by itself. Oxygen is a diatomic, so it has a subscript of a 2. Once all of those subscripts are in place, you cannot change them. We fix any issues with the number of atoms by adding coefficients. So these coefficients have been put into place to balance the reaction. But your subscripts are coming from crossing down charges, part of your polyatomic ion, 
or recognizing your diatomics and giving them a two. Now that we know where all of the numbers in our chemical reaction come from, let's take a look at some of the common types of chemical reaction. 